Hey everybody, Peyton Mensmeyer here, and we are currently in a young adult series titled Unlearning Christianese. In this series, we are taking words that are very familiar in the Christian faith and Christian context, and we are trying to unlearn what we think we know about these words so that we can relearn them in the biblical context and how they were supposed to be understood. We're looking at words like holiness and words like transgression and sin and words like Messiah and exile and trying to understand what does this word have to mean for me and what did it mean for the biblical authors during this time. So today we are talking about the word exile. In Hebrew, it's the word galosh. Now that word is an, an exile. The experience of exile is the, uh, it's the devastating uh, reality of living in a space where you are being cast out from your home, from a space where you feel most safe, from the space where you belong. Exile is being cast, is being cast away from your home. And this is very familiar uh, story and theme in the biblical story. This is uh, the reality of many of the authors. They are cast away from, they are exiled from their land. And exile simply means, galash means to be cast away from. But here's the reality. Galash, exile, doesn't simply mean to be exiled from a territory or a land or a physical location. But it also is the experience of being exiled and cast out maybe from social circles um, from your mental capacity that you know you belong. It's the experience of loneliness. It's the experience of desperation. It's the experience of not, of not feeling like you have anybody to relate to. It's being cast away from everybody else. And so this word, exile, it's actually very relevant for us today. But in order for us to fully understand this in the biblical context, I think it's important for us to look at some of the first places this word, galosh in Hebrew, exile, where this word is used. The very first time that this word is used is Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. Now, if you know anything about the biblical story, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, the earth or land or human being and the one of life, right? That's what these words mean. These first human beings, they were put in a garden. And in this garden, God gave them everything that they needed to prosper and to live wonderful, abundant lives. But he gave them one condition, that you have access to the tree of life, you have access to all of these trees of abundance, but the one you will not have ac access to is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And on the way to the tree of life, they have to make the choice. They choose wrongly. They choose to believe that they know what is true and right and instead of trusting in God. And they deceive God. And in that process, and as a consequence, God says that he must cast them away. But if you pay attention to the words in chapter 3, around 20 and 24, you'll notice that God says, we have to cast them away for their protection. In fact, in the process of casting them away, of pushing them out of the garden, he actually clothes them. And he says, we need to actually keep them away from the tree of eternal life because now they are living in a state of knowing good and evil in a state of brokenness. And we don't want them to live in that state forever. This brings us to a key theme and component when it comes to exile where God casts out an exile, where he meets exiles, he also provides protection. In every circumstance where you see exile, you also see a layer of protection. God clothes Adam and Eve. He protects them to not enter the garden so that they won't live in a state of knowing good and evil. The very next story, you find the other instance, the second instance where the word galash, exile, is used, and that's with Cain and Abel. If you know, Cain and Abel, the first siblings, the first children in the Bible, and Abel has an offering pleasing to God. Cain does not. Cain becomes jealous and he kills his brother, bringing the first blood and the first murder to the human condition. And in, uh, in his stupor and in his punishment, Cain is, is flabbergasted that God is going to cast him out. And he says, no, if you, if you, don't give me, if you do this to me, God, the, the people around, they're just going to kill me. And so God marks him with a mark. We don't know what it is, 
But in uh, Genesis chapter 4, uh, verse 15, we see God marking Cain in some capacity, protecting him, saying that whoever uh, dares to kill Cain, because he has this mark, he will find vengeance uh, at a greater capacity. God exile at the same God, time God protects. Another key place where we find this word galash, exile, to cast out, is in the story of Abraham and Sarah. Abram and Sarai, what their names were before, were an older couple who were given the promise that they would be given children upon children that would make a great nation, but still barren, they doubt. And so Sarai has this scheme for Abraham to sleep with their slave and that they'll use that child to become their heir and can't continue on their family. They don't trust. Notice this is reflecting back to the garden. They don't trust God's word to them. They instead trust their own scheming, right? And so this child is born, Hagar, Ishmael, this child is born. And eventually Sarah becomes pregnant and has her own child. Isaac. And in chapter 21, verse 10, Sarah tells Abraham, cast out Hagar and this child of hers. Even though it was my idea, they will never take the heir in the spot of our child, Isaac. And so Abraham does this after God gives him the leniency and the, the approval to do that. But where God provides exile, he also provides protection. Chapter 21, verse 18, God hears the cries of Hagar in the wilderness and he comes to her and says, don't cry, don't be worried, lift up your head. I will make your son a a, a great nation. I'll make his name a great nation, verse 18. And this is important for us. The feelings of isolation, of disorientation, of loneliness, these are all modes that people in the Bible experienced. And so what we can do is use their stories to help guide us and how we should respond. And and our, our knowledge should always be an understanding that where God allows exile, God always provides protection. And he leads us through these trials of disorientation and isolation. So kings in the Bible and higher power, they are not immune to these feelings. What I want to do for the last portion of this video is I want to read a psalm to you from King David. King David was a man after God's own heart. He was a man who rose to power by God's blessing, but also through his own devastation and his own wisdom fell from that power. He is one of the most iconic characters in the Bible and one that likely got closest to this Messiah figure, this savior of the world, but he was human and he was flawed. And at the rise of his power, after he'd already been anointed as God's chosen one to be king, Saul, his predecessor, wouldn't allow it and chased him all through the wilderness, wanted to kill him. And at the time of writing Psalm 34, David is hiding in a cave and he gives praise to God despite his disorientation, and his desperateness, and his loneliness. So here, what we're going to do for the last of this video, and I encourage you, open up your Bible, Psalm 34. We're going to spend the last moments um, in this video in a moment of meditation. And we did this with the young adults as well. And we're going to play some music, some relaxing music. And I'm going to read Psalm 34 right now. And I, I encourage you to read along with me or just sit And allow these words to soak in. And as I read, I want you just to to imagine yourself in this situation. Imagine you're David sitting in a cave, not knowing what the next movements in God's plan are. You're just sitting, trusting that God will provide in this moment of exile that you feel. And after I read, we'll sit in that silence. You can read over again. We'll sit in that silence. I'll ask a couple questions and then I'll close this out. So let's read Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. 
I sought the Lord, and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him, they are radiant. Their faces, they're never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Use this moment to allow these words to sink in. Which of these verses captures your attention and why? So the psalm, it it talks about a time when David was experiencing exile. Can you think of a time, maybe it's now, maybe it's been in the past, that you experienced exile? Spend time rereading verses 5 through 8 right now. What thoughts and feelings come up as you read them? So to take refuge in God means to look to him for comfort and security in the midst of chaos. What other sources, positive or negative, do you tend to look to for comfort and security during times of trouble? And what happens when you put your hope in sources instead of God? So use this time of reflection, whatever thoughts came to it, to your mind, uh, whatever moments were brought back to your memory, let those prompt a prayer. And let's go to that prayer right now. God, thank you for this moment. God, we are always humbled to know that we are in your presence in this moment. God, we pray that we will be attentive, that we will listen to hear your voice. God, we pray for wisdom as we interpret these words, as we apply them to our life. And God, as we think about exile, about these moments of disorientation or loneliness, God, we pray that you will see us through those times of exile and God, that you will protect us during them. God, that you will restore us and make us new again. God, this is our prayer. May it be so. We say this prayer in the name of our Savior Jesus, who we believe can make all things possible. Amen.